These are pieces of lost media that are talked about very little, despite the fact that they have major prominence in the animation industry. Maybe it's due to the subject matter of the things in question? And that is of course where I jump into the equation. First let's get into the story of the creator and the background before we get into the actual thing. Argentina just got universal male suffrage and with that came the win of Hippolito Yrigoyen of the center-left radical civic union to the presidency. He instituted many progressive reforms that earned him the nickname the father of the poor. However, one reform that kind of bit him in the butt was the mass freedom of the press. Why? Because the press endlessly mocked him. For both political reasons and for his more socially awkward eccentricities, mostly via newsreels and such. That led to a newsreel producer by the name of Federico Valle to hire some folks to jazz up his newsreels in particular. One person he hired was Quirino Cistani, an Italian-born Argentine newspaper cartoonist, to produce a one-minute short for him called La Intervención en la Provincia de Buenos Aires, which discussed Yirigoyen ousting the governor of Buenos Aires, Marcelino Ergante. That short impressed Valle so much that they decided to work together to produce something a little ambitious, a 70-minute animated film about Yirigoyen. The film was to be called El Apostol and was to be released on November 9th, 1917. It was going to be the first completely animated feature film, and it was said to be animated differently than what we normally expect. Rather than being animated via cells, as was what ended up becoming the mainstream way to animate in the early days, it was said to be animated via paper cutouts, as in they would cut out the little character model, take a picture, and then would repose it in a different position, take a picture again, and so on and so forth. A style that you may be familiar with with a more recent property, but we'll get to that when we get to that. The plot of the film would be centering around Yuri Goyen talking to some opposition congressmen about his platform to cleanse Buenos Aires of its immorality and corruption, but they would simply oppose him and ridicule his plans. Seeing no other viable options to try and save Buenos Aires, he would then decide to ascend into heaven to try and figure out a more spiritual way to deal with the matter. Or Jupiter, but that's just being Zeus with extra steps. Yuri Goyen would then ask Zeus for his lightning bolts to try and strike down corruption. Zeus agrees to his demands, and then Yuri Goyen throws one bolt at one of the largest buildings in the city. The city is then consumed in a massive fire, killing everybody. Yuri Goyen would then wake up to realize that it was all a dream, and that politics was a little bit more complicated than that. As you can see, the comparison I was making to South Park does not necessarily end with just the animation style, but also its writing. And much like South Park, it was both acclaimed and hated. Audiences in Buenos Aires really loved it, because not only was it humorous, but also the effects were praised, particularly the Buenos Aires burning scene, which was accomplished via a small model. However, of course, the government that was mocked did not necessarily like it, so they banned the film from being shown in the city. And since the film was really only relevant to Buenos Aires, there was really no point in taking it anywhere else in Argentina. So they just stuffed it in Valle's warehouse with a bunch of other projects he made. And much like other lost media before 1920, a studio fire burned the only copies in existence and it is forever gone. All we have left are character designs from the film and the one photo of the Buenos Aires model. Is that it for Cristani's political satire? I mean, he thought so. When Yuri Goyen left office and the next president, Marcelo Alviar, came into office, he didn't really see anything to make fun of in Alviar, so he basically decided to move on to make animations satirizing other aspects of Argentinian pop culture. However, in 1928, Yurigoyen won a non-consecutive term, and Cristani saw a new Yurigoyen. Rather than just the socially awkward guy who meant well previously, he now saw an old man who was essentially a puppet of his party's corrupt leaders, and sought to make another movie about Yirigoyen, which also has an interesting story. The film was titled Peludopolis and officially began production in 1929. 
The plot was set to revolve around a pirate version of Yirigoyen taking over a ship that represented Argentina from Aviar as he sets off to a mystical island called Quesolandia. All the while he gets harassed by sharks representing the heads of his party. However, one year into production, Yirigoyen was ousted in a military coup and Cristani halted production of the movie. He didn't want the movie to get shelved, so he added a new plotline where the coup leader, Jose Felix Iriburu, takes over the film as the new protagonist, as well as adding an everyman character by the name of Juan Pueblo to give the film a sort of moral center because Uriburu was a little less friendly than Yuri Goyen. You know what else got added to the movie? Sound, as it was set to make use of the new Vita phone, making it the first animated movie with sound, mostly used for the soundtrack written by Jose Vasquez Vigo. After the reworkings, the film was released on September 16th, 1931, with the blessing of Uriburu. The film was received with similar praise as the last one, one critic calling the film, quote, a ponderable effort. It should be noted that the excess of quantity has, by logical compensation, damaged the quality of the film. Easy and very well adapted music contributes to the good success of Polis that makes you laugh and like. However, a mix of the wake of a military coup and the Great Depression hitting Argentina did not really put a lot of people in the movie-watching mood. Things were made more drastic when Yirigoyen died in his sleep in 1933. Out of respect, Cristani decided to pull his biggest work from circulation and just store it in a warehouse, showing that all of this mockery was indeed in good taste. In 1957 and 1961, fires burned down his warehouses, destroying all known copies of the movie. All that remains are posters, some stills from the film, and a making of featurette that will be included in the description. However, in 1983, right before his death, Cristani did decide to remake some scenes from the movie just so that you can at least understand how he made it and how it would have looked if they still existed. So yeah, to all you Disney fanatics, Disney can't claim ownership of either the first animated film or the first animated film with sound. That honor goes to an Italian-born Argentinian. Make sure the world knows this. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that bell to be notified when a future video mine comes out. And if you're interested in more content from me, you can go to my website, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, check out my articles on the Independent Political Report, or consider supporting me on Patreon.